While everyone's fighting for attention on TikTok and YouTube, half a billion people quietly log into another platform every month, but not to scroll. According to their 2025 Business Insights report, eight out of 10 users come here to plan a purchase. Not someday, not next month or next year, within the next week. This is not a social media platform. That is a marketplace hiding in plain sight. So if you've ever thought it's too late to start, this might be your window because this platform, I believe it is underused. And in this video, I'm going to show you how regular people are using AI to create digital products like eBooks or printables or guides that actually sell through this platform. Not by chasing every new tool, but by building something useful and simple and real. And at the end, I will show you one small shift in how you think about AI, a shift that can turn it from another distraction into the start of a digital brand that you actually believe in. But before we talk about tools or eBooks, Let's start with a step back because the real question is not what you sell, it's where you show up. You see, most creators and entrepreneurs or aspiring entrepreneurs spend days fighting for seconds of attention on TikTok, on YouTube, on Instagram, but I believe there is one platform that is rewriting the rules, Pinterest. And the numbers are solid. Pinterest is not an app. It is the world's second largest visual search engine, and it's quietly becoming one of the best places for entrepreneurs to build businesses that last. Over 570 million people now use Pinterest every month, according to this research, this study from Pinterest itself. But there is the thing. These people are not there to scroll for entertainment. They're usually searching with intent. They come here to plan. Pinterest's own business insights show that eight out of 10 users are actually planning a purchase, not in a vague, you know, someday kind of thing, but within the next week. That means every pin saved, every idea board created is a signal of immediate intent. And if you compare that to TikTok or Instagram, where content disappears in 24 hours maximum, on interest, a single pin can stay relevant for four months, sometimes even six or 12 months. So this makes every Pinterest pin no longer a post, but a compounding asset, just like videos on YouTube. But usage alone does not make it a business platform. What turns it into opportunity is behavior. So let's look at some stats. Over 55% of pinners say they use Pinterest to shop, according to Social Pilot. Also, 85% of weekly users have actually purchased something based on a pin that they saw, according to Sprout Social. And users on Pinterest spend twice as much per month compared to people on other social platforms, according to attract.io. So clearly the audience is valuable. One in three Pinterest shoppers reports making over $100,000 annually, according to Printful. Nearly 70% of these are women, driving decisions in categories like home, kids, wellness, and lifestyle. And 42% of Pinterest users are Generation Z, so Gen Zs, the fastest growing demographic in the market, according to eMarketer.com. So you see, we've got the perfect storm. We've got a high intent audience, long lasting visibility, and product friendly behavior. Without the chaos of daily posting or viral algorithms, it means the platform is already behaving like a marketplace. People come here searching, saving, uh, buying ideas, not just scrolling for content. And yet, most entrepreneurs are ignoring it. They still see Pinterest as the old mood board app from 2015, but it's evolved. It's not just where people look for inspiration anymore. It's literally where they make decisions. In fact, we found a study that said 93% of users say they use Pinterest to plan their next purchase, project, or goal. And when you think about that behavior, planning, comparing, deciding, it starts to sound less like social media and more like Google for products and ideas. <laughs> Pinterest is now, as I said, the second largest visual search engine in the world, except unlike Google, it's designed to help you see possibilities, not just read about them. So what does that mean for you, the entrepreneur? We need to be practical, right? It means the opportunity not only is not gone, it's just, it's shifting. So while everyone's fighting for a few seconds of short form platforms attention, Pinterest is, I believe, the one that's quietly rewarding the people who build evergreen content. Things that teach, things that add value, that inspire, that solve actual problems. Because think about this, Pinterest has, like I said, almost half a billion active users, but only a tiny fraction are creators. That means for every 100 people searching for ideas, there's maybe a handful of people actually posting them. Because most people see it as Pinterest, the inspiration, not the selling. Meanwhile, those who treat it like commerce, 
get compounding discovery, year-round traffic, and probably buyers knocking on their digital doors. And that's the opportunity. That is the reason that I wanted to share this, and that's why I believe Pinterest deserves more than just one more pin strategy. And there's one more detail. Now, a lot of creators overlook this part and they grab a random link or stick to whatever comes with their platform. But if you want people to instantly recognize that your website is a place to buy, you need a domain that says so, a .store domain. Because if you're serious about building a digital business, you need to treat it like one. And having your own domain is no longer a luxury. It's a signal of credibility. It's a domain name that is built specifically for online selling, not just a name, but a signal. When somebody sees your website.store, they immediately know that they're in the right place to explore your products and actually make a purchase. It's clean, it's professional, and it tells people instantly, this is where products live. A detailed study actually found that websites on a .store domain get 87% more traffic and rank twice higher on Google because both people and Google instantly recognize that your website is an online store. And it's not just small creators using it. Over one and a half million sellers already trust .store, including names that I'm sure you know. Mr. Beast, Cristiano Ronaldo, Rihanna, even Emirates Airlines. They all use .store for their official stores because it signals credibility and commerce from the very first click. Now, here's the good part. For a limited time, you can grab your .store domain for just 99 cents using my special code at the link below. I mean, it's quick, it's affordable, and it makes your brand look instantly more professional. And when you register your domain, you will also get access to Elevate.store, which is a completely free toolkit that's designed for online sellers. It includes exclusive deals on tools like Canva or Shopify or AutoDS, a lot of others, all curated to help you design, launch, and grow your online store faster. It also makes sharing links from Pinterest a lot easier because they look polished, not messy. So you can register your .store domain today, connect it to your Shopify or your Gumroad page and have a brand presence that feels real. Because online presence is trust and trust is what converts. Thank you .store for partnering with us on today's video. Okay, now let me get back and walk you through all the steps because for this overall opportunity, I think digital products are perfect because when you create digital products that actually help, that add value and that match what people are already searching for, Pinterest becomes your silent sales engine. Every pin becomes a doorway to your product. Every board becomes a funnel and every save becomes a lead potentially. So the window is wide open. Only this time you don't need to go viral. You just need to be visible where buyers already are. Okay, so now we're clear on the opportunity on the distribution side. We have a platform that is built around intent and not noise. But there is another half of the story, because while Pinterest quietly became a marketplace, something even bigger has been happening behind the scenes in how those products get created. So let's talk about what's happening right now, quietly, underneath the noise. The generative AI content creation market, the AI books and visuals and guides, was worth 14 billion in 2024. And by 2030, according to this research from Statista, it is expected to reach 80 billion. That is nearly six times growth. And what surprised me the most when reading this report was that almost half of it comes from text-based content, not from video, not from code, and not from audio. Text, meaning guides, eBooks, blog posts, templates. And that's important because text is where normal people can still win. You don't need a film crew or, I don't know, 10 million followers. You do, however, need a clear idea and a solution or a system that helps people solve problems that they already care about. Now, let's get specific and super practical. So let's talk about the rule that I believe you want to keep in mind. So the first step to winning with AI content is not picking the tool. <laughs> so don't go there, don't ask me which tool. It's about picking your person. If you try to sell to everyone, your product will mean nothing to anyone. But if you sell to one person, if you focus on them, the one type of buyer, suddenly everything becomes simple. So here's a principle that I use that I call the passion multiplied by price rule. So what you want to do is pick a niche where people are emotionally invested and where that emotion costs money because people don't spend based on logic. They spend to feel like themselves. So let me show you a few examples that work beautifully for eBooks and guides. First of all, for parents of young kids, they will spend 
quite a bit on activities that make their children smarter or happier. AI can help you create cognitive skills sheets and learning activities for kids that are personalized, printable, beautiful. And if you check Google Trends right now, you will see a huge rise in searches for smart child and cognitive skills, for example. Now, another persona or person that you could focus on would be the apartment plant lovers. This is a huge community online and most of them are tired of killing their plants. So you can create guides like the seven day indoor jungle starter plan or how to keep your plants alive. I mean, it's fun, it's helpful, and it's evergreen. And Google Trends shows the demand is there. <laughs> you can see it in this chart. And then thirdly, you could focus on people that are into alternative nutrition and natural healing. Think anti-inflammatory meal guides or gut reset plans or herbal remedy uh, journals. These niches do not die, they grow because people are emotionally tied to the transformation. Now, here's the key difference between the ones who succeed and the ones who don't. They stop creating random content and start building systems around one audience. So you don't need 20 ebooks. You need one avatar and three to five products that make their life easier. If you're not sure where to start, you can use this simple prompt. You can ask your LLM of choice to list 20 ebook ideas that solve a recurring pain for your specific type of person that is interested in this specific topic. You can ask it for each idea to focus on a single outcome, not just knowledge, and should be easily convertible into an ebook. This is how you find valuable micro niches, not in the topic, but in the transformation. And then what you wanna do is build your AI ebook system. Okay, so you wanna bring this to life. And how you wanna do that, to go from idea to finished digital product without burning out or crossing ethical lines is step number one, research and structure with AI, but don't skip your brain. So you can use Notebook LM, you can use Claude or Gemini to collect information and summarize credible sources, not just random blogs. We don't need more AI slop. Do not feed the digital garbage monster, okay? You need to use your brain and you need to fact check everything that you're putting into e these eBooks, okay? Once you have that, then you ask it to create an outline that is focused on results. And you can use a prompt like, summarize the most important insights from these five sources on this specific topic and then suggest three chapter outline that helps this target person achieve this specific outcome. And that becomes your backbone, okay? But as I said, you want to fact check everything. And then you also want to add your own voice, your own experience, your own style, because AI gives you the structure, but you still give it the truth. And then take the summary and bring it into Notion or Google Docs or any document writer that you use. And then you start writing for the outcome, not for the volume. Okay, so step number two is filling in the gaps, let's say. So each chapter should answer one question, one pain, one goal. You don't need to fill up pages. You want to think about creating progress. And then step number three, you can create a beautiful design using a Canva template, for example, because you don't need to be a designer. Canva already has lots of beautiful ebook templates. All you need to do is pick one that fits your brand and use AI to adapt your tone, your colors, your fonts, and just keep it consistent because consistency builds trust, it builds a brand. And then step number four, if you choose to, you can generate different visuals, whether it's with Imagine or with Nano Banana or Mid Journey, you can have a prompt like create soft, natural, flat lay images on houseplants in morning light for a minimalist ebook or generate simple line illustrations of children learning through play in pastel tones. You know, it depends on what you're choosing to create. But what you want is to keep the style cohesive with your Canva template. That's what makes it feel more professional. And then you're ready to publish. Once your ebook is ready, you can sell it as I said, through Shopify, through Gumroad, all are very simple to set up, but you don't just upload and hope for traffic. Okay, you need to build a brand that people remember. And that starts with the domain. So if you remember, we've talked about .store, and that's the reason why I suggested them, because I think they will enhance your authority. And then last, we need to build your traffic engine. So now that your ebook lives somewhere, it needs to be visible, it needs to be seen. And that's why you want to use Pinterest. And I think it will quietly become your best friend. So here's my suggested approach. You can create 10 to 20 pin designs in Canva using your ebook visuals. You can add compelling headlines like save this before your next grocery trip or three plant care mistakes you don't realize you're making. And then each pin will have a link to your dot store domain or your lead magnet. Pinterest SEO might not be lightning fast, but once it catches, it compounds. So your pins can drive traffic for months without posting daily. And you can automate your designs with AI. Uh, you can batch descriptions with Gemini. You can schedule everything in advance. You could even build an agent for that if you wanted to. And now let's close the loop. When you combine these pieces, a focused niche, an AI powered ebook system, and a professional domain together with Pinterest as a search traffic, what you're building is no longer a product. It's a flywheel, it's a process. Every ebook that you launch feeds your visibility. Every pin compounds your reach. 
and also every satisfied customer deepens your authority. That is what people get wrong about AI. They think it replaces creativity. Well, it could if you let it, but I believe it doesn't. It only replaces friction. You still need curiosity, you still need taste, and you still need knowledge and fact-checking. <laughs> but now you have the tools to turn that into something that actually moves. So stop chasing tools, pick one person, one problem, and one product, use AI to amplify your clarity, not to replace it, and remember, ideas do not build momentum decisions do, action does, because the future does not belong to the ones with the best tools. It belongs, in my opinion, to the ones who finally use them with purpose. All right, you guys, that was it for today. Thank you so, so much for watching. Like this video if you did, be sure to subscribe if you haven't done so, and also share it with anyone in your circle of friends or family who you think might be benefiting from learning more about this. And if you want to practice and apply all that I've shared with you with over 11,000 other people, you are more than welcome to come and join us into our free school community. I make sure to have the team add the QR code here. So I hope to see you on the other side. We have so much value that you can benefit from completely free. All you need to do is engage and share with everyone else what you're doing, what you're going through, what your insights are and learn from them as well. We have calls together. We have Q and A sessions. We have challenges that you can go through step by step and everything is free. So I hope to see you on the other side. In the meantime, I suggest you go ahead and watch this video over here and I'll see you soon. Bye.